In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a play pause button for the all new Adobe Captivate. I'm Paul Wilson and I make YouTube videos about Adobe Captivate once a week or so, but sometimes I talk about other e-learning topics as well. It depends. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the idea of adding a play pause button. I've seen some comments on the YouTube channels and the forums about people wanting to add a play pause button so that their learners can pause the course at any moment during the playback of their e-learning project. The reasons for this are many. Usually it's a stakeholder realizes that they want to stop the training for whatever reason and they realize they don't have the ability. The course will play out uh, to the end of the slide and pause, but they need the ability to pause at any moment. So that's what they've asked for. And you as an e-learning designer developer, you need to provide. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. And uh, it's a simple process, uh, but there are some extra steps that you might not be aware of. Namely, that you need to consider what happens to your play pause button when you arrive on a slide, at when the moment it, it's been pressed, but also what happens at the end of a slide as well. Let's take a look. Okay, let me just kind of explain in a high level overview of what you're going to need for this thing to work. So first thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need an on enter advanced action for every single slide. And that's to ensure that your play pause button ha is set up in the current state, but also that we assign the value to a variable to keep track of what that state is. We're also going to need the advanced interaction that we'll write for the play pause button itself. And then at the end of the slide, we're going to have a bookmark trigger a set of actions so that the play pause button is kind of left in the appropriate state as well. I actually would normally recommend that you do this on a blank slide and then duplicate that each time you need a new slide in your e-learning project because the advanced actions will already be in place if you duplicate it from that slide. But today I'm going to attempt to build these interactions with some existing content and some audio on the slides so you can really see it in action. So one of the first things to be aware of is that buttons in the all new Adobe Captivate do not have the ability to add custom states to them. You're gonna have a hover state, a visited state, selected and a disabled state, and that you can turn these on or off as you need them, but you can't add a new state. And therefore, what we're going to do in this case is we're going to create an image and use that as a button. So it's a little bit different approach than simply adding a button block to your slide. So I'm gonna click on the add media blocks icon in my left hand toolbar, and I'm gonna select image. Now the first thing I don't need is a caption and a subtitle, so we're gonna get rid of those. With the image selected, I'm gonna click on the replace image icon in my properties inspector, and I already have an image of a play and a pause button on my system, so I'll choose system. And the, the first or the default button that you choose should be the state of the button as it would appear when you arrive on the slide. And for most cases, the course is playing when you arrive on a slide. So a play pause button should be in the pause option. Uh, for your users to pause the slide. So let's go ahead and click on open. We're going to uh, edit this image because we need to make a few changes here. We need the image to fit. And uh, while you could choose fixed height, I think scaled works better for mobile and tablet. So I'll go ahead and press save. And we'll just resize this block to be as small as you would expect it to be. With the remaining content, I can select that and just choose auto fit height to force that pause button to be at the bottom of the slide. So with the uh, pause button selected, let's create a new state that will show the play button when of course the slide is paused. So I'm gonna click on add. It's gonna create uh, a new custom state. I'm gonna label that paused and we will click on the replace image icon to find that other image that we need on our system and that's the play circle there click open 
and it will switch to that, but I'm gonna return back to the default state here. So that looks pretty good. The next thing I need to do is create the variable that I'll be using to keep track of whether my slide is paused or whether I'm playing here. So I'm gonna click on the window drop down menu and select variables. I'm gonna click the plus icon and we're gonna call this underscore playing. This is gonna be a true false variable because we're either playing or we're paused, one of those two states and the default value will be true because when we arrive on our first slide, this playing variable and the play pause button will be in a playing state there. So we'll click on create, click outside of the variables window to close the variables window. And now we can start writing our actions for this. The first one I'm going to do is I'm going to create the on enter action. So we'll click on interactions in the right hand toolbar here and we'll click on plus and we'll select timeline and slide enter as our trigger and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enable this button and you'll see why in a little bit but um, it's something I've added to this solution that I think works well so let's click on more we'll choose enable and we'll select the pause circle that you see here. Press next and then done. The next action on enter is we need to assign our variable the appropriate value. So we're going to click on more, scroll down to the bottom here and select assign variable, choose our underscore playing variable and we'll assign it a value of true and click done. Let's add a new action where we set the state of our pause button to be the default state, in other words, playing when we arrive on the slide. Click done. And last but not least, we need an action that ensures that the slide is playing. So we'll select add new action, more, and just under pause timeline is resume timeline. And we'll click on done. A good best practice when you have multiple actions on an interaction like this, select the first item hold down your shift key, select the last item, and then merge these all together so that they appear to happen simultaneously. So the next thing we wanna take care of is what happens when we actually press our play pause button. So let's write an advanced interaction that takes care of that. So let's click on the pause button here. I'm gonna select add an interaction and the trigger for this is a mouse trigger or a tap or a click or whatever you want to call it there. And we'll click on that. And the first thing you'll notice is that Adobe Captivate has now suddenly added all the typical button states that you would see to our multi-state object, our play pause button. We don't need the hover, so I'm going to disable that. I'm also going to disable visited, selected, and disabled. So the only two states we'll have is our default state and the custom state we've already created called pause. So let's go ahead and start to build this interaction here. The first thing we need is to look at the condition of our variable. That will determine which set of actions we're going to run. So I'm gonna click on the plus icon here and what we're basing this condition on is the condition of that variable. So we'll select variable and we'll choose our playing variable. And if playing is equal to a value of true, which it would be the first time you arrive on a slide, press save, we want to assign our variable a value of false, click done. Click add a new action under more. We'll pause the timeline, click done. Set the state of our play pause button to paused, next, and then done. And like before, we're gonna select our first action of this interaction and our last action, and we'll merge these together. So that takes care of when our value is equal to true, but what if we've already pressed it? That we'll take, we'll take care of with the else section of our condition. So click on else, we'll add a new action, and we're going to assign our variable of playing a value back to true. So essentially we're doing 
the continued playback after we've paused it. We'll click on Add New Action, click under More, and we'll scroll down to Resume Timeline, because we are playing it again. And we'll need to set the state of our button to be back to the default state, which will show a pause button, but look as if we're playing. And click Done. Like before, we'll select our first and our last action and merge these together. So we're good with our play pause button here. Everything should work fine. So now we need to add another interaction. Now the problem is if I choose slide interactions and I choose slide exit, that actually is only going to run stuff when I literally leave the slide. I just want to have a certain set of actions occur when I get to the end of my slide. So for the end of slide actions, we're actually going to trigger those with a bookmark. Now we want to make sure that that bookmark is not positioned right over top of your audio. So I'm going to extend the timeline of my slides. I'm going to click a point on the ruler here and then click on the bookmark item to create a new bookmark. You can call it whatever you like. You can say end of slide or something like that. But here we can click we're going to assign our variable underscore playing a value of false because we want to pause the slide at the end of the slide. Click done. We want to add a new action that sets the state of our button, our play pause button to show as paused. Click next and then done. We also want to add a new action that will pause the timeline. Done. And we really don't want anyone pressing the play pause button once you get to the end of the slide. And that's why we enabled it when we arrived on the slide. We're actually going to create a new action that disables the button as well. Press next and then done. So like before, we'll select our first action and our last action, merge those together. So the last thing I need to do is replicate all of these on enter and bookmark triggered actions to the other slide, along with, of course, the inclusion of our play pause button block. Now the play pause button block is easy. We can select the top most group in the timeline there, press Control C on your keyboard and navigate to your other slides and simply paste it onto those slides. Works like a charm. It would be great if Adobe Captivate would allow us to copy the slide enter, which we can do, that is available. But as far as I'm aware, there's no way to paste it onto the on enter of this slide. Again, not that I can see here. So if Adobe's watching this video, there's something that would be nice to allow me to do these types of interactions a lot quicker. In this instance, I'm going to replicate those and we'll get everything up and running and so that you can see a preview of what this project will look like. I'll fast forward through those parts, but we'll get you set up here in just a few moments. So I've completed the on enter actions that I need on the two remaining slide as well as the bookmark actions for the two remaining slides. Let's go back up to the top here and preview this project and make sure it works as expected. Now I'll test the play pause and interrupt the playback, but let's take a close look at the built in play bar to make sure that the play pause button matches the play pause button that's in the play bar itself. So let's go ahead and press play. Welcome to Mastering Public Speaking. Press the start button to begin. Okay, so it's now paused. Press start. This is a step-by-step -step guide created to give you the fundamental knowledge and guidance you need. So I can pause it at this point. Maybe I need to go get a coffee. Maybe someone's walked by my desk and wants to talk to me about something. That's the real advantage of having the play pause button. I mean, alternatively, you certainly can use the play bar, 
but this gives you a custom solution if you want to avoid using the play bar that you see here. Let's go ahead and continue to play the course. You need to become a self-assured and confident public speaker. Press the forward button to proceed. Okay, so now it's paused again, and this button is disabled. Pressing it again has no impact. I'm forced to use the other navigation controls that either are available in the play bar that you see here, or if you've added your own controls. Join this transformative journey to unlock your public speaking and again, potential. The play pause button works great. By the end of this course, you will be able to identify common fears and anxieties, analyze the target audience and their needs, develop a clear and concise central message, leverage nonverbal communication skills, and adapt to dynamic speaking styles and content. Press the forward button to proceed. And once again, it's returned to a normal play button and your learners would use whatever controls you gave them to continue playing the rest of your e-learning project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.